Well, so what's next Friday? Friday, next Friday, May 8th, is Coconut Cream Pie Day. We're not making coconut cream pie. And just a heads up, falling coconuts kill 150 people a year. So just be careful. My name is Alexandria. This is Michael. And today we're making French fries. Welcome to Local Measure. <laughs> What's your favorite French fry? Like fast food, homemade? Like oh man. My, I love McDonald's French fries. They're so good. Yeah, sometimes I crave those. Yeah. Um, I really like Shake Shack. Shake Shack? With the... Oh, the crinkle cuts. Yeah. Oh yeah. Those are good. If you haven't seen our show before, we take a food and then we make it two different ways. We wanna try and take the way that most people make these certain types of foods or dishes at home, like on a weeknight, and just make them a little bit better. We're gonna call that the half measure recipe. We do another version of it that's a little more complicated or a little more involved, and then the full measure recipe is the more complicated involved one. At the end, we'll let you know if it's worth the time and effort that it takes to do the full measure recipe. You've made the ones out of the bag, the frozen yeah, yeah, ones. Yeah. What do you think of those? Those are pretty good. Yeah? I mean, they get nice and crispy in the oven. Crispy. I think I found a, a decent couple of ways that we can jazz those up a bit. So let's get started on those. What's that? I don't know, is that what you're gonna do? But what is it that you're sprinkling? It's some extra stuff. What is the stuff? What do you want it to be? Salt. <laughs> For the half measure version, we'll use regular old frozen french fries and add some dried herbs and some garlic powder. You could definitely use fresh herbs, but I like to keep half measure recipes as simple as possible for anyone who may not have remembered to get fresh herbs for their frozen french fries. We start by putting a half a bag of frozen fries in a medium bowl and adding one teaspoon of olive oil, one teaspoon of dried thyme, one teaspoon of dried rosemary, one eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a pinch of kosher salt. Give these a quick toss to coat them and place them on a baking sheet. You could use parchment, but I chose to go with foil, hoping to give these icy tubers a bit more of a crisp on the outside. I also made a batch just straight out of the bag to try these neat, I guess? I don't know, whatever the frozen french fry version of untouched is. The last step I am changing is to add 25 degrees to the temperature suggested on the bag. It says to heat my oven to 425 degrees, so I'm gonna go to 450. Again, this is an effort to make these fellas a little more crisp. Cook per the directions on your particular bag. Mine says 18 to 25 minutes. I'm gonna aim right for the middle at around 22. And these look pretty decent. We don't eat much frozen food, to be honest, but that also means neither of us has had a bag of these fries in a while. I'm kind of excited to see how these taste. Maybe this is better than the way that I typically bake our potatoes at home. All right. Long one. There's something about them that is just like a distinctly frozen french fry taste. Yeah. I haven't had them in a really long time. I kind of expected them to be better because I haven't had them in a while, but like they ha there's like a distinct flavor to them. What is that? Can you put your finger on that? Bag. <laughs> it's whatever. I mean, it's a French fry, and it was easy. So these have garlic and thyme and rosemary on them. Those are definitely better. And the brightness of the like the rosemary kind of hides <laughs> the bag flavor. <laughs> I don't think I would eat these. Like if I had these on my plate, I would. No, just this is whatever. kind of a bummer. Yeah, these are fun because it's mostly you're tasting garlic and thyme. Yeah, but even those like they don't taste like. No, they taste like pretty cheap. They, like, I think just the addition of adding like a little bit of your own like spices, and they're dried spices, I didn't even use fresh thyme. This is just out of the can. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. They do have kind of a plasticky flavor. Mm. Like when you get fries at a restaurant, and then you take them home, and you think you're gonna be able to reheat them and eat them later, that's what this is. <laughs> I think they're a little better than that. Oh, what's this? This is everything you'll need to make honest to God french fries that don't taste like bag. We will be using the double fry method, meaning we fry them twice, two times. I can hear some folks asking already, is that really necessary? And yeah, it is. The show is called the full measure and not the pretty full measure. If you're gonna go through the hassle of doing this at home, you should do it the way that gives you the best results. And double frying does just that. Let me climb off my soapbox here and get back to the video. We start by peeling our potatoes. I'm using about three pounds of potatoes here, which is usually enough to feed about three or four people. 
Next, we need french fry shapes, which we accomplish by squaring up our potatoes. Cut off both ends, then square one side at a time, rotating around the potato. This gives you a regular shape to start cutting. Cut one quarter inch planks, then stack those planks two to three high. Finally, cut about one quarter inch through the planks. This thickness gives a good crisp outside and a nice fluffy inside. Prepping vegetables like this is a really good way to learn very simple and basic knife skills. Next, add two tablespoons of white vinegar to two quarts of cold water. Then your cut potatoes, and finally two tablespoons of kosher salt. Give a little stir to combine, and crank the heat to high and bring to a boil. Boil the potatoes for about 20 to 25 minutes or until you can press a knife point into them with almost no resistance. If they're crumbling and falling apart, you cook them for too long. Remove from the pot and dry for five minutes on a paper towel lined baking sheet. I like to do my frying in a five quart cast iron Dutch oven. You need something very heavy that has a lot of headroom. Fill about halfway up with your peanut oil. Frying can be pretty dangerous at home, especially if you have a gas stove top, so let's take a look at setting up your fry station before we even start. This is one of those kitchen tasks where it's really good to have everything prepared and ready so you can be as safe as possible. You'll need your dried potatoes on one baking sheet, another sheet for when they are removed from the fryer, also lined with paper towels. You will also absolutely need a thermometer. Frying is 100% about the temperature of the oil, and unless you have fried a billion times, there's no way you're gonna guess the proper temperature of the oil in that pot. This is a candy thermometer. It costs $10 on Amazon. Please pick one up. With our preparation out of the way, let's get back to work. With the oil at 400 degrees, it's time to undergo the first fry. I like to use this little spider strainer thing to help drop them into the oil. The potatoes will have to be fried in three to four batches and you don't want to overcrowd the pot. That's because the potatoes will actually drop the oil to about 360 degrees, exactly where we want it. Overcrowding the pot would drop the oil temperature too much. Let the potatoes fry for one minute and then remove and put on your outbound baking sheet. Before you can start on the next batch, you have to let the heat rebound to 400 degrees so you can fry at the target temperature of 360. Another reason to have your thermometer in the pot. Continue frying small batches for one minute at a time. Let the heat rebound each time and monitor the temperature throughout the process. Once all of the potatoes are done with their first fry, let them cool uncovered on the pan. When they are cool, wrap them in plastic and put them in your freezer for a few hours, preferably overnight. You are essentially making frozen french fries that all restaurants have at the ready. Finally, it's time for our second fry. Same pot, same oil, same temperatures. 400 to drop the fries, cools down to 360, finish frying, and back up to 400 for the next batch. This time, however, we'll let the fries cook for about three to five minutes or until they're golden brown, moving them around occasionally. Once the fries are done, remove and place onto your outbound baking sheet or directly into a bowl and season with kosher salt immediately. The hot oil will help the salt stick to the fries. You can hold your finished fries in a 200 degree oven while you finish your other batches. Start to rebound your oil and prep for the next batch. Since you're going through all this trouble, it's nice to add something to fancy things up a bit. Some freshly chopped rosemary? Absolutely. Maybe a little grated Parmesan cheese? Both of those are really good additions to french fries. You can also put an entire sprig of rosemary in the oil as you fry your potatoes. Not only will it flavor the oil and the potatoes, but it's also a pretty nice garnish when you're done. Once all the fries are completely done, you're ready to serve. That's it, using the twice fried method. Admittedly, we do not fry that often, but of all the ways I've tried making french fries, this method gives the absolute best results every time. Fries gotta be eaten hot, so let's get right to the tasting. Well, here we are. There's a mess over there, because that was, making french fries is, is a lot of work. These are just normal. Yeah. I mean, it's immensely, tastes immensely better. Yeah, but the texture, the inside texture is so much better. It's so fluffy. Yeah, it's not dry and like a chore. The texture is noticeably, but noticeably better. The outside is like crunchy. It's crispy. It's crispy, but the inside is like soft. Let me see if I can get it. I don't think it's fair to even compare these to the other ones, but I do want to talk about how much effort that took because frying at home is not a simple task. Yeah. And I cannot even begin to imagine doing that on top of cooking a actual meal. Another whole other meal. This is like a fun little treat. It's not something that you would make very often. It's it's hard because the difference between the frozen fries and these is so much that it almost is worth it. Mm -hmm. But that was a lot of work. These are Parmesan and fried rosemary. And we have some leftover fry sauce from our burger episode. If you'd like to see how this fry sauce is made, you can click in the corner right now. And uh, we're gonna use that for these fancy fries. Actually, let's just try a fry dry by itself first. A little dry fry? Yeah. Mm. 
Those are good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I would say like if you're doing a special occasion at home dinner, you know a lot of people will do like steaks and fries or whatever at home for like an anniversary or a birthday or something, and like that's totally worth yeah, it. Yeah, if Those you had a great, if you had a really nice steak that you've paid a significant amount of money for, and you want that like steakhouse experience, cut these a little thicker, do this process. Yeah, those are really, those are really good. But honestly, you could do your finished frying while your steaks are resting and before those finish. Let's see where French fries rank on our chart of worth itness. <laughs> this is our chart of worth itness, where we measure how much effort you put into a dish versus how much payoff you get. The half measure fries were okay. The ones with the dried herbs were decent. The ones straight out of the bag with just salt weren't my favorite, but the ones with the dried herbs, I could see eating every once in a while. The full measure recipe where we hand cut and deep fried the potatoes were so tasty. They were very, very good. But the amount of work that can go into deep frying at home can be a little overwhelming. I had fun doing it. I'll probably continue to make fries at home in the future, just not that often. If you're craving really quality french fries and don't want to put in a ton of work, there's probably a good restaurant not far from you that'll do the trick. And if not, now you know how to make fries. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you're interested in any of the other videos that we have, you can check out our channel. We've got, I think this is episode 10. So this is the 10th episode that we've done. Um, if you have any recipes that you'd like us to try, leave us a comment below and give us a suggestion. If you don't mind giving us a thumbs up down there in the bottom and then clicking subscribe if you wanna see any more of these videos. Right now we're putting them out on Mondays and Fridays. So we're actually doing two a week, which has been a lot of fun and we appreciate everyone following along with us. Thank you very much. Thank you.